Dustin Pedroia beginning a rehab assignment tonight with the Pawtucket Red Sox. Pedroia going one for three with a run. The Paw Sox falling tonight, but for Pedroia, this latest rehab stint is all about battling back from another injury. I mean, I really, I mean, I was rolling right along until my knee got, you know, I hurt my knee. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, if a pitcher gets Tommy John, they don't quit. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's a part of it. I mean, I play a position where, you know, guys slide into you, you don't know where they are. It's part of the job. So, um, it happens, part of the game. Um, but also, if you get hurt, you know, rehabbing and, and finding a way to get back is also a part of the game, too. Um, so that's what I'm going through. So Pedroia and the Pawtucket Red Sox will be back in action tomorrow night at McCoy Stadium. The Paw Sox are home all weekend long. They're taking on the Winnet Stripers. Now, tomorrow night's game can be seen right here on Charter TV3. Brock Holt, another Boston Red Sox down on a rehab assignment with Pawtucket. He went one for three with a run tonight. So again, Paw Sox, Winnet Stripers tomorrow night right here on Charter TV3 at 6 o'clock. Paw Sox home all weekend. Expect Pedroia and Brock Holt to be down there playing for the weekend. St. John's and the lacrosse whisperer, Greg Monroe, taking on Hopkinton. Third quarter, St. John's up 6-4. Tim LaCroix going to the cooker down the alley. He fires good bounce shot just wide. Hopkinton's Connor Sullivan then. Taking it to the goal. Sullivan, nice shot. Going off stick side, low and away for the goal at 6-5. Owen Boss stepping into it. Boss with a cannon. 7-5, St. John's in front. Hopkinton's Andrew Palico. Going right down Main Street. Good stick protection from Palico because St. John's was all over him. He scores 7-6. Hopkinton on the attack. St. John's good defense. Noah Bryant right there. The long stick getting right on the hands of his attackman. And lifting it up at the last second. Fourth quarter tied at seven. Colin Deso. He ripples. What else is new? Nice selly. St. John's up 8-7. Deso. Rolls back. Sweeps to the front of the cage. Hits the post. Then Hopkinton with a bid. And Shane Walsh, the keeper for St. John's, coming up with a great save. That's fantastic. One-on-one -on -one right on the doorstep. Hopkinton, though, gets the win today. 10-8 is your final. Water-soaked field as Worcester Tech taking on Abby Kelly in softball this afternoon. 2-0 Worcester Tech, top of the second. Worcester Tech's Nalia Salinas in the circle and on her game. She strikes out the side. Bottom of the second now, Abby Kelly's Mia Pellegrino reaching back for the strikeout. Runners in scoring position for Ashley Parker. Slow roller to third. Parker, good hustle. She's safe. Haley Doyle scores. Lacey Lee scores. 4-0 Worcester Tech in front. Bottom of the third, 5-0 Worcester Tech now. Bases loaded. Abby Kelly's Raylene Samadi with a shot into right. Kayla Calderon scores. Pellegrino scores. 5-2. The Bears are on the board. And a lot of deer hanging around the inner high schools these days. This guy might be looking to transfer. Who knows? Salinas getting the strikeout to end the inning for the Eagles. Bottom of the third. Sydney LaFlash drives one to left center. Jordan Warner scores, 6-2 Worcester Tech. Then the pitch gets away. LaFlash coming home. She scores, makes it 7-2. And Worcester Tech goes on to win this one, 16-4, your final. The news not so good for the Assumption College baseball team today as Assumption falls in the NCAA tournament to Felician 6-5 in a back-and-forth game. So the Hounds now eliminated from the NCAA tournament. But a couple of local kids doing pretty well. Brendan Desitels. Four innings pitched on the mound. Two earned runs, five strikeouts, and Dylan Zona had a run scored for the Hounds as well. A great season for Assumption comes to a close today in the NCAA tournament. Well, the Massachusetts Pirates have a bye this week. Now, the Pirates still trying to find their rhythm early on in this season, so the bye comes at a good time for the team. Well, for me, I believe it's a good time because we've got some injuries. It's going to give us some more time to get some players that, that we that Jawad signed to be, you know, instrumental for us to get on the field. Um, but as far as working me, I, I just, uh, I never stopped going, you know, until the season's over. So for me, it's just giving me an opportunity to, to, to straighten out some things, to iron out some things that I may not have had time to iron out in the, in the previous weeks or whatever, just catching up on some stuff. Um, and it gives the guys a chance to go home and see their families and rest a little bit. All right, so again, the Pirates have a bye this week, and then they will be back at it 
a week from this weekend. And that will do it for sports. It looks like we're going to have some nice week weather this weekend. I know, finally, huh? Yeah. Finally, we can get outside and enjoy maybe two days straight without rain yes. and, and then, cold weather. Yeah, Monday. But although Pamela Gardner was saying Monday could even hit like high 70s. We need that. We do need we'll that. We'll take it. But we'll no take rain. it. Even, I know, <laughs> we're going to get the washout maybe Monday, which stinks. Mm. But who knows? Thank God for turf. So at least yes. maybe some lacrosse teams will play on Monday. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Turf is killing. That's right. Well, that's going to do it for us here on Worcester News tonight. For Kevin Che, I'm Anna Botari. Have a great weekend.